please pause the video and try this question. All right. For any positive integer n, the sum of the first n positive integers equals n times n plus 1 by 2. That's the formula which many of you might already know. Hmm. What's the sum of all the even integers between 99 and 301? Sum of all the even integers. So 100 plus 102 plus 104 plus 106 dot 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 all the way till 298 plus 300. Hmm. So not all the numbers in this range, only the even numbers. So I'm wondering how does that formula help me? Well, I'm thinking maybe the sum of the even numbers would be roughly close to the half of sum of all the numbers. So let me figure out the sum of all the numbers and then let me divide. Because one more thing that's helping me here is when I look at the answer choices, they're fairly spread out 10,000, 20,000 something, then 22,000, and then 40 and 45,000. So fairly spread out answer choices, maybe an estimation would help. Hmm. One thing I'm going to do initially itself is, although they've written 99 and 301, since we're dealing only with the even integers, I'm going to think about numbers between 100 and 300, including both of them. So what's the sum of all these numbers between 100 and 300? Well, one way to figure that out is figure out the sum of the first 300 numbers using the formula. And then from that, subtract the sum of the first 99 numbers. So what we'll be left with is the sum of numbers between 100 and 300. Hmm. So the sum of first 300 numbers would be 300 times 301 divided by 2, n times n plus 1 by 2. 301 times 300 by 2, uh, if I take that to be 150, we get 150 times 301. 301 times 100 is 30,100. And then 301 times 50 would be half of this. Half of 30,000 is 15,000. Half of 100 is 50. So 1550. The overall sum becomes 45,150. Hmm. Now, this is the sum of the first 300 integers. This includes the odd ones also, even ones, everything. Let me subtract the sum of the first 99 numbers from this. So what's the sum of the first 99 numbers? 99 into 100 divided by 2. So 9900 divided by 2 or 99 into 50. 15 to 100 would have been 5,000. So 15 to 99 would be 4,950. So from this 4, 45,150, I subtract 4,950. That's the sum I get. So somewhere around 40,000, somewhere around 40,000, right? Maybe a little bit more than 40,000. Let me, let me look at the answers now. Remember, what I next need to do is divide by 2. What I'm doing right now is I'm estimating. Overall, I have to figure out the sum of only the even integers between in that range. If I include the odd numbers also, perhaps the overall sum will become close to double, right? So right now, after subtracting this 45, uh, this 4,950 from 45,150, I get a number somewhere around 40,000. I haven't done an exact calculation, but the answer choices are helping me here. And then when I divide by 2, I get 20K. So anyway, these three answer choices are either too small or too big. Now, how do I choose between these two? That's where I'm stuck right now. Mm, well, if the sum of the even integers were 22,650, then the overall sum would be, I don't know, close to 42,000, 43,000, right? Something more than 40,000 something, right? So this, even if I were to get more specific here, 45,150 minus 5,000 would be 40,150. So actually the sum here is 40,200. That's the actual sum, right? So if I divide by two, I get 20,100. And why is it not matching up exactly? Well, the reason for that is there are more even numbers in the range than there are odd numbers. We're starting with an even number. We're going all the way to an even number. So that's why the sum is not exact. But definitely now, 22,650 is too big. The answer is 2,200. Let me recap what we did here. First of all, I understood that we needed the sum of just the even integers between 99 and 301, which meant we're looking for numbers between 100 and 300. Next. When I saw the answer choices, I realized that the answer choices are fairly spread apart. So I decided that estimation could be a good way to go about this question. How do we estimate now? The sum of only the even numbers. The approach I used here is I figured out the sum of all the numbers till 300. Um, or rather, my, my starting point was, let me figure out the sum of all these numbers between 100 and 300, and then I'll divide by 2, which will give me a close enough answer. I'm not exactly sure whether the sum of even numbers will be exactly the half or a little bit more than half or less than half but it'll be around that number somewhere. So with that as a starting point, I set out to figure out the sum of the first 300, uh, the numbers between 100 and 300. In order to do that, I first figured out the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 300, and then I figured out the sum of all the numbers from 1 through 99. I subtracted the second figure from the first figure that gave me the overall sum of numbers between 100 and 300. And then by dividing by 2, 
I got an answer which was close to 20,200. Anyway, the answers which are in the 10,000 range or the 40,000 range are too small or too big. Between 20,200 and 22,650, now it was about understanding that the sum will not go 2,000 more than what we figured out. It might be 100, 200 here and there, here or there, but it won't be 2,600 more than what we figured out. So even 22,650 was too big. Therefore, B is the answer. That's one way to go about it. Let's think of some other approach now. The numbers we're dealing with, remember, are just the even ones. So 100 plus 102 plus 104 plus all the way till 296 plus 298 plus 300. Hmm. Let's make sure we understand what's going on here. Let's take some smaller numbers to get a clearer picture. How, how about if we had 10 plus 12 plus 14 plus 16 plus 18 plus 20? Hmm. So I notice that the first and the last number add up to 30, the second and the second last add up to 30, and then the middle two add up to 30 also. So we get 30 times 1, 2, 3. Perhaps a very similar thing here also. 100 and 300 add up to 400. The next, the next two would add up to 300 also. Sorry, 400 also. And so on, right? 100 plus 300 is 400. 102 plus 298 is also 400. 104 plus 296 is also 400. Now the question remains, how many such pairs do we have? Hmm. Multiple ways to figure that out. I'm thinking about how many pairs we have. So one way is in my mind, I'm just thinking about all the numbers, 100, all, all the pairs, 100 plus 300, 102 plus 298. And as I keep going, um, I'll have 196 plus 304, sorry, 204. And then 198 plus 202, and then I'll be left with 200 alone. Right? 200 won't have a partner as such. So, how many pairs? Well, how many even numbers do we have from 100 till 198? I'm thinking now. How many even numbers are these? 100 through 199 is 100 numbers. Right? 1 through 99 is 99 numbers. Or 101 through 199 would be 99 numbers. Since 100 is included also, this is 100 numbers. Half of them would be odd. Half of them would be even. And then when I'm talking about 100 through 198, how many even numbers are there? Well, that number would be the same as the case between in 100 through 199. The only thing that changes is that we'll now have one fewer odd number. The number of even numbers would still be half of 150, which tells me overall we have 50 pairs of the sum 400, 50 pairs adding up to 400, and there's this guy left alone in the end, which again gives us the answer, 2200. Hmm. How else could we figure out the sum of all the even numbers between 100 and 300 inclusive? The good thing is these are all evenly spaced, spaced numbers. It's an, it's an AP, right? All the numbers are equidistant from each other, or rather every su su subsequent number is equidistant. So a gap of two, a gap of two, a gap of two, and so on. So with numbers like these, mm, well, if I can figure out the average and just multiply the average by the total number of items, I'll get my result. Think about it, right? The sum of the numbers, that's how we calculate the average, the sum of the numbers divided by the number of elements. So if I can somehow figure out the average here times the number of elements, it'll give me the sum of the numbers. So what's the average of all these numbers from 100 to 300, evenly spaced? Well, bang in the middle somewhere. So somewhere around 200. Would it be less than 200? Would it be more than 200? Actually, no, it will be exactly 200, right? There are, as we just figured out earlier, there are 50 numbers on the left of 200, there are 50 numbers on the right of 200, and then there's the 200 number itself. Overall, there are 101 even numbers, all evenly spaced. The average is exactly the middle number, 200. That's the average 200. And there are 101 such numbers, as we just counted in the previous approach. From 100 till 198, there are 50 numbers. So by the same logic, from 202 till 300, there'll be 50 numbers, even numbers. And then there's 200 separately. So that's a total of 101 numbers. Their sum, again, 200 times 101 would be 2200. If I were to think more about the formula, the formula which is for the sum of consecutive numbers, mm, how can I use that formula somehow to figure out the sum of these guys, which are not consecutive, right? They're, they're evenly spaced, but they're not consecutive integers. So what can we do here? Well, one thing we can do is if I take a two common, 
I'm left with 50 plus 51 plus something plus 150. So now I can apply the formula if I can figure out the sum of numbers from 50 to 150. How to do that? One way is, as we've discussed earlier, figure out the sum of all the numbers from 1 through 150. Subtract from that the sum of numbers from 1 through 49. Overall, that will leave us with the sum of numbers from 50 to 150. Multiply that by 2. That's our answer. So let's do this. The sum of numbers from 1 through 150 is 150 into 151 divided by 2. Uh, it seems like a fairly complex calculation. right? And then the other one would be um, 1 through 49. So 49 into 50 divided by 2. Hmm. I get a result here. I get a result here. I subtract the second one from the first one. Get an overall result. Mm, that's the sum of all the numbers between 50 and 150. And then multiply that by 2. That will give me the answer. That's one way to go about it. Nothing wrong with it. But it does look like this fairly cumbersome calculations here. So at this stage also, in fact, I can apply the same symmetry. If you look at it, 50 and 150 would add up to 200. 51 and 149 would add up to 200. 52 and 148 would add up to 200 and so on. Till what point will this continue? Well, till one, on the one hand, we get 99. On the other, we get 101. And after that, we'll have 100 bang in the middle, which won't have a partner, which won't have a number to pair with. How many such pairs do we have? Again, 50 through 99, that's 50 pairs, right? So we're doing essentially the same thing in this approach, figuring out the sum of these guys in the middle. We have 50 numbers adding up to 200. We have 100 separately, and the old thing is multiplied by 2. So 200 into 100, that's 20,000 plus 200. We get the same answer again. In this particular question, I feel that the approaches which actually did not use the given formula were actually the more efficient ones. Right. So if you felt that way also, let that be a lesson. Just because they've given a formula in the question, there's no reason that we have to use it. The objective here is to figure out the sum of all these even integers. That's all we care about. Whether we calculate that using the formula or without doesn't change what the sum should be. So don't you don't need to limit yourself or restrict yourself to using the formula given.